Hello and welcome to the Compound Word Game app tutorial using Thunkable. Before we begin in Thunkable, we're going to talk a little bit about compound words. What is a compound word? I have some examples here. Rainbow, toothbrush, basketball. What do they all have in common? Well, they are one word made of two words. So they're two words put together to create a new word. So rain and bow, tooth and brush, basket and ball. You probably know this already, but the younger students that we'll be making this app for probably do not. We're going to be making a compound word game app that will challenge younger users to make compound words correctly by guessing the correct ending to a set of words. So here we have hair, paint, and tooth. What do you think the last part of each of those words might be? Brush is the correct answer. Hairbrush, paintbrush, toothbrush. So this is what our app will look like. Uh, we'll have a start screen. Can you guess the right ending to these compound words? And then a next button or a begin button or a start button. And then on each page of our app, we'll have three pictures and a space for the user to type in what they think the second half of the word is that all of these pictures would have in common. When they click submit, we will either go to a new screen or uh, if they get it incorrect, we can have a hint pop up to give them a little bit of help so that they know what, um, so they can have an easier time actually guessing the second half of the word. Um, and then when they get to the end, we'll have a screen that says something like, you're a compound word champion, congratulations. Okay, so this is what our app is going to look like. We're gonna start at thunkable.com and click sign in. We're going to be making an iOS app this week, so click iOS, and then you're going to sign in with Google. When you sign in with Google, you're probably going to use your own account, um, but if you're not, you're gonna share accounts with uh, someone else. If you are sharing with someone else, do not touch any of the other apps that are in the account because you don't want to uh, mess those up at all. So once you're in here, if you have a little pop-up that says, you know, a tutorial or something like that, you can just close out of that or say uh, next time or something like that because we're going to go straight into create new app. We're going to come up with a name for our app. I'm not going to be very creative here. I'm going to call mine compound word game, but you can call yours whatever you would like. Once you uh, call it the compound word game, I also highly recommend putting, if you're working with a partner, putting initials at the end of that. Um, so compound word game. And then we go into our first screen. If you remember, we wanted a label here that says, can you guess the right ending to these compound words? So over here, we have all of our components. Um, that will be in our app and over here we have the screen that the app will look like. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to drag a label onto my screen one. I can either pick that up and drag it over here to screen one or onto the screen itself. So I have a label now in the center of my screen. When I click on that either here or over here, I can see that I can change the text to that label. If you remember, if I can remember, can you guess the correct ending. What did I have over here? Can you guess the correct ending to these compound words? Now you can say uh, whatever you would like here. Okay, can you guess the correct ending to these compound words? You can also do things like change the color, okay, and the font size. We can include or increase that. I'm going to make mine pretty big because it's the first screen. Um, let's see, maybe italicize and I'll change the background color. Oh, you know what that's doing? That's changing the background color of the text box um, that that text is living in, that label. So I actually don't want to change, I'm going to change that back to clear. And what I should do is change the size of my, the height of my label box to fit the contents of what I've put inside it. So now the box around the words fits um, so that if I did want to change the background of just that box, I could do that, okay? If I want to change the background of the whole screen, I would have to click on screen over here and then change the background color, okay? So now we have a label here that says, can you guess the correct ending to these compound words? And I believe there is a way to make that centered, and I think it's going to be in the advanced section here. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm pretty sure I saw it earlier down here. Text align. Let's do center. And there we go. So that was in the advanced section under text align. All right, underneath the label, we need a button that will take us to our next page. So right now we only have one screen 
with a label on it, let's add a component by pressing the plus sign and dragging a button over either to screen one over here or over here to the actual screen. Now, if they get out of order like this, I want my button underneath my label. I can change it here or I can change it over here. Okay, so you can reorder things um, however you'd like. Okay, so let's make sure the label's on top. At least for me, I want my label on top of my button. All right, my button, if I click on it, I want that to say start or begin or something like that. When that button is clicked, we want to open a new screen, um, and we need so we need to add a screen. I'm going to click on the plus component again, and this time instead of in the user interface category, I'm going to add a new screen. So I'm going to drag screen over and put it right there. Now, I'm actually going to change the order of this. I want screen one to come first. So when the user first opens my app, they're at screen one. And then they're going to be at screen two. Now, screen two is completely blank. So what are we going to put on screen two? Well, let's think about that. Let's go back to my example. I had three pictures, a text input, and a button. So let's go ahead and drag over three image background components. Or not background, but just image. So let's go to add component image and we're going to drag three of them over here one two three these are going to be the images that have the first half of the compound words uh, then i'm going to do a text input that's where the user is going to guess what the second um, what the second part of each word is and of course it's going to be the same second half for all three pictures do you see how I had to reorganize these just to make sure that um, the pictures come first? And then underneath that, I want a button. And I'm going to do it over here this time to put it in the right place. There we go. Now, these are all kind of close together. We could solve this problem a couple different ways. We could add some rows and put everything inside rows. But I'm just going to do empty labels. I'm going to put an empty label in between each of these things. Um, and actually, it's going to be easier if I do it over here. So these labels are just going to be empty. And they're going to give us space in between each of our pictures and our text input box. That one kind of went in the wrong spot. Let's do that. And so now the label, if I click on it and I just erase the text, it's kind of a cheat way to add some space in there. And those labels aren't actually going to do anything. They're just going to hang tight and provide us with some space between everything. I think I might do one more label underneath my text input. Uh, let's go back to add component label. I'm going to put it underneath there in between my button and my um, input box. So, all right. There we go. So I have three image holders for now. We haven't found the images yet, but that's where the images will go. We have um, a type here box, which is where they're going to type their answer in. And then we have a button that I'm going to change the text on to say uh, submit. And then if they submit their word and it's correct, it will take them to a new page. So that would be screen three. But for now, we're going to go back to screen one. I just collapsed screen two. Okay, I'm going to go back to screen one and see if I can code this button to work. So I'm going to go over here to blocks. And I want you guys to pause the video and see if you can figure out how to make that work, how to make it so that when the start button is clicked, screen two is opened. So let's pause and see if you can do some thinking. All right, if you guessed that button one, when it's clicked, you navigate to, it's in control, navigate to screen two, you are absolutely correct. So we have when that button one, which is called button one, I know it's called button one because when I click on it, I can see over here button one. When that button is clicked, navigate to screen two and then what will happen is this screen will show up on um, the user's ipad so in the next video what we're going to do is look at how to replace these image placeholders with actual pictures and then how to code the submit button so that when they submit whatever they've typed in here if they get it correct it will go to a new screen if not it will have a, a hint pop up all right i will see you in the next video